First match will be the Metalopolis. So it's Protoss versus Protoss. What does that mean? It's usually short to the point and very brutal, which is why Naniwa is so good at it. I'm trying to remember the last PvP he actually lost, and I'm having difficulty coming up with it. Here we go, folks. I bring you Naniwa in the red trunks. He is playing Protoss up to the north of this particular map, to Metalopolis, versus his opponent also playing Protoss from Team Liquid. It's the one and only Tyler, and he is in the blue trunks. So, as I said before, this is a really brutal short matchup. Naniwa excels at it. Tyler is pretty is a pretty good PvP player, honestly, but I've seen him lose to players who are perhaps not quite as good as Naniwa. For instance, versus Hazelwobs in a recent series, he actually went out there. So I wouldn't rate him all that highly in terms of PvP, especially against someone like Naniwa, but he seems like he's learned a few new tricks. He did very well in his opening games, and he used some interesting strategies. So we're going to find out exactly just how effective that can really be against the beast that is Naniwa. And he really, really is a beast, folks. This is something you've got to understand. Naniwa is so cool, calm, and collected all of the time. And he's very calculating as well. He goes in at exactly the right time. His timings are pretty much perfect. He is aggressive. And speaking of aggressive, there we go. Naniwa's gate on 12 versus Tyler's gate on 13. Doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Obviously means the Zealot's probably going to be out a little quicker for Naniwa, but it, it doesn't really matter all that much. It's not a huge bone-crushing and earth-shattering revelation. Naniwa having a bit of scouting action going on right here, and of course he will know exactly where his opponent is, as Tyler knows where he is. And if you've never watched a PvP before, then the first few minutes are usually exactly the same, regardless of who is playing. There are some fairly limited build orders available for Protoss. Of course, if it's Protoss versus Protoss, you get even more limitations. Now, some of you on the ladder might, of course, be aware that the popularity of the Gate has declined just a little bit. I say just a little bit, it's not a huge amount. And the Proxy 2 Gateway play has become more common. I don't expect any of that. And Proxy 2 Gate versus Proxy 2 Gate is literally the most boring thing in the world. You have not seen anything so ridiculous. It's a bunch of zealots running around each other, kind of slapping each other, and probes getting killed in the middle. It's awful. Nobody wants to see that. It's almost as boring as Roach versus Roach, although not quite. Second gateway coming down right here for Naniwa, and needless to say, Tyler will keep an eye on things, and Nani's unable to throw him out just yet. He needs a stalker in order to make that happen. Gateways up, Pylon is up for Tyler as well, and Cybernex score looking to be completed. Now the warp gate will come in earlier for Naniwa than it will for Tyler, unless Tyler saved an awful lot of Chrono Boost. I think it's Naniwa has saved an awful lot of Chrono Boost as well. Tyler must be expecting a four gate. Has to be. That's got to be one of the things he considers. Tyler scouts once again. He sees the Chrono Boost thing on the side next score, but he's only seeing two gateways up right now. A third gateway is going down at the back, and Tyler will scout that almost immediately. Tyler with great awareness once again, keeping an eye on exactly what Naniwa is doing, keeping an eye on the timings more to the point. Out comes the Stalker. That'll be able to deny any more scouting action there and eliminate it finally. In the meantime, two more gateways coming up for Tyler. This is kind of like a game of chicken. Which of these guys four gates first, if at all? Well, of course, the answer is Naniwa. Naniwa with four gateways on the way. He already has two fully operational. And Tyler, in fact, going with a three gateway approach. Now, three gateway is usually overwhelmed by four gate for very obvious reasons. That's one more gateway pumping out units. However, you can shake it depending on what you've got. If it's, say, a stalker heavy four gate, you can shake it by getting immortals. We'll see how that ends up working out for him. Three gateways up for Tyler, and Naniwa about to complete these four gateways right here. Timed almost perfectly. There's another quick chrono boost to finish that off, and he'll be able to turn these to warp gates at about the five and a half minute mark, which is perfect and very aggressive. Naniwa going forward once again, and he actually even has the unit count advantage right now. He's got three stalkers up on the field already. He can defend this proxy pile on these. He cuts his probes at 20, doesn't go for any more than that. He's looking for a very early end to this. Tyler may be able to deal with this with good, well placed force field. We're about to find out. That was a good force field. Nothing wrong with that. And Naniwa losing a stalker for no reason. Excellent play there by Tyler who is defending with an inferior force for the moment. Unfortunately, he's got these two pylons that he's got to worry about. They are going up and they are both in warp in range. If he can get up the ramp. Right now he can't, but Tyler has no more energy to throw at force field. He can regenerate it. He needs to work on that almost immediately. Naniwa with a couple of zealots up at the top. That gives him visibility up the top of the ramp. So he'll be able to pick off those zealots if he likes. Takes a little bit of damage right there on Tyler's just 
not looking like he can actually get into the base right now. And this is good play right here by Tyler. It's exactly what you have to do in order to counter Active Wargate. You've got to be efficient. He's got one more gateway than you do. He's more aggressive. You've got to make sure you can pick him off. And actually, Naniwa is throwing units away right here. A little bit of damage done to the economy of Tyler, but not a huge amount. But it did let those Stalkers in. But now, Tyler actually has a unit count advantage. He's able to drive away. Great focus fire right here by Tyler. Brings down one. Looks for the second and gets it. Needs to bring that Zealot down as quickly as possible. So it doesn't slice its way through those Stalkers. But he's repulsed it. And he can probably kill that proxy pylon. Unless, of course, he gets overwhelmed in the interim. Naniwa has additional warpits coming in. But Tyler does have backup. Three more Stalkers moving in right now. Now, that's a four stalker. What's that sentry on the field as well for Tyler? He's got to bring that one down immediately and not take additional fire as he walks around. Good micro management there by Naniwai. Wants to make sure he can bring as much fire in as possible. It's currently 23 probes to 19 probes. Economic advantage in favor of Tyler. However, this is still going to be a little bit messy. Naniwa is continuing the pressure, but the four gate is starting to peter out just a little bit. He can't really afford to maintain it at this speed. All Zealots coming in right now. He does have a unit count advantage, but it comes down to whether or not the Zealots are actually going to be effective. Trying to pick it off. Good micromanagement there by Tyler as well. Driven back into the back of his mineral line. And in the meantime, Naniwa doing what he really should be doing right now, which is trying to cripple the economy of Tyler. Doing a good job of doing just that. And the Zealots proved to be an excellent distraction in that regard. Loads of probes killed off. That's 15 now for Tyler and falling rapidly down to 14. Tyler looking to try and counterattack. He does have the numbers right now, but Naniwa continues to warp in. And this is going to end up being a mess right now as Naniwa charges in the line at a full speed placed down right there as well trying to lock in his opponent he's able to lock down at least one Naniwa is forced to try and melee the stalker it's going to be a little bit difficult he doesn't have the range firepower right now but he does have an economic advantage he can hold this if he is able to continue bringing the units in he's able to surround Tyler Tyler loses another one and another one going down right there that's messy and once again going to the middle of the line great strategy there by Naniwa and you'll notice that Tyler currently sitting on now 10 ropes Falling rapidly, initial reinforcement streaming in right now by Naniwa. It's a surround, it's a good surround, and Naniwa nails it down. GG! Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. 